Now it's even more difficult to get. So what it's going to mean is having pork is even going to be more of a status symbol because now you can brag like, well, even with swine flu and the culling of all of our pigs and the 7x increase in the price of pork, we can still have it at our dinner table. Look how rich and well-connected we are because we could get it and other people can't, which is only going to drive demand more as everybody bids up for face value. And I'm really curious when a piece of pork is going to cost the same amount as a diamond. ADAPT 2030 Mini Ice Age Conversations covers changes in our climate due to a new and intensifying grand solar minimum. In the media, overlooking, downplaying, or burying cold weather changes occurring on our planet. This is in order to keep the global warming agenda steaming full speed ahead. I do this podcast and radio program because we need to begin conversations on how to adapt our food growing strategies long before 2030 as agricultural zones shift, affecting global crop output, but very few mainstream media outlets are talking about the most important issue of our time, cold weather crop losses. Our sun is going through a 400 year cycle, which has effects on our weather patterns as our magnetosphere weakens and the jet streams go out of flow. It's not CO2, it's not you, it's the sun. Are you ready to thrive in the grand solar minimum? Then join me for many Ice Age Conversations. I'm your host, David Dubine. But then the paperwork that's supposedly running back and forth with all the documents, bill of lading, all the shipping that you need between countries, you have to send, you know, three copies, a couple FedEx or DHL, whatever service you're using, physical paper copies. That's why using blockchain is such a bonus here, because you can load that into the blockchain unaltered and somebody else can get it on the other end. But that would cease too, because, you know, all commerce is going to cease. You think they're going to leave DHL offices open during that tumultuous time? Do you really think they're going to let all the shipping companies continue to operate as normal during that time? And how long would it take to quell the protest before everything got back to normal again? Weeks or months, plural, for sure. It's not going to be a one-day thing. And Okay, everybody good. The disruption escalates. So I was reading some articles here that Singapore is already planning to take on trans shipping and then Kaohsiung Port in Taiwan, in southern Taiwan, is also planning to take on more cargo in the event that Hong Kong, the disruption in the banking and the supply chain alone of what would happen in Hong Kong would, would absolutely lock up part of this planet. Unbeknownst to most people how integrated everything is at the moment, but their ramp up is three weeks at the minimum. So think about the onward supply chain from that point. How many things would disappear out of our stores with just-in-time delivery? Generally, there's three days of food in a city. Other things that take a little longer to get there, maybe a hammer or a shovel or something, quickly disappear. Now, a lot of companies today don't have big warehouses like they used to, where they'd have some super gigantic warehousing facility in, say, California. But do you think that even if they do have a warehouse in California that that shovel would make it all the way out somewhere in Alabama. Piedmont, Alabama, local hardware store, Home Depot. You think they're going to run out of stuff? But again, when you look at a store shelf, half the stuff's from China, 50% of the stuff is either American-made or Canadian-made or European-imported or wherever it comes from, outside Mexico, anywhere, which would have its own internal mechanisms of creating supply shortages But what's in those containers destined inland that continue to keep this machine chugging along? You know, this is just one single flashpoint on the planet that's happening at the moment. Because Kashmir, they don't export a lot. I've been researching the areas on the planet that seem to be points that also underlying current on there is their new grow zones that could be turned into massive grow zones. As areas in countries go offline, and we're starting to see this everywhere across the planet at the moment. So when you look around this planet and all these hot points going on, take a step beyond the politics into the possibility to turn these areas into new food growing zones with increasing rainfall patterns. And look beneath your feet into the soil, literally, that can be grown plants or crops to feed people. And see if it takes a different light as to how our positioning is across the planet. Annexing 
That's the largest breadbasket in Europe, period. Tunisia, Algeria, largest grain production ever this year as well. Isn't that quirky? How new grain zones are coming on where the Roman grain growing areas had gone dry for 2,000 years. Now the rain's back, growing bumper record crops, and then suddenly, oh, that person's got to go after 30 years. But we'll take over the farming. <laughs> Far beyond oil here. The, the plays that you're seeing, you know, they can continue to tell you it's about oil for some point in the future here. But eventually you're going to wake up and go, oh, it's all about growing food now. Energy will be secondary to food. Also, if any of these disruptions happen, everything's going to go up in price. So we're taking a look here uh, at some of the articles I've been surfing through the week in terms of slowdown in consumption. And I, I look at some of these diamond crisis of all things. And I thought, diamond crisis? What's this going? This is off of Zero Hedge here. And speaking of cycles, my new book with my co-author Bill Porter, Climate Revolution, a must-read for understanding our sun-driven climate. As we progress deeper into this new Eddie Grand Solar Minimum, weather extremes leading to global food scarcity and higher food prices are here now. This book describes the expected changes, how to survive and thrive during future challenging times, and also practical preparations. The entire book is interactive with over 250 links. So you can click and go out to the scientific aspect of what we're talking about with the repeating cycles in this grand solar minimum. The science is explained so you understand the mechanisms. The solutions are there because we know we're going to face these exact same problems again that were faced in the Maunder minimum, the Sporer minimum, the Wolf minimum. Find designs for building greenhouses, grow guides, Beamed soil techniques as well as bioreactors to create your own growth hormones for the soil. Available now, the new ADAPT 2030 Climate Revolution. The link's in the description box below. So take a look at where the slowdown is. The slowdown in the bottom 50% of a country, they don't spend much anyway, so that really doesn't matter. It doesn't, doesn't count. Because people that don't have much money that if they slow down their spending, well, they didn't have much money to begin with. So slowing it down really doesn't indicate much other than maybe they're saving for Christmas. Holidays coming up. But this is the opposite. Because people with money buy large gemstones. People with money buy large carrot stones for engagements and weddings. Diamond crisis, De Beers sales plunge 44%. As demand plummets globally, they're usually selling about half a billion dollars worth of diamond product per month. But this last three months aggregated only came out to 280 million per month. So what's going on? And they were talking about specifically, you know, two carat and above diamond just crashed. And they have a whole table here of different carat sizes that have crashed. And the secondary market showing no demand for goods as well. And what's shocking in this is these secondary uh, sales points here, they're talking about the, the commercial grades of the diamonds, 30 point, and they have all these other different types of diamonds listed out here. And they're saying that the market shows no demand, and now they're even being sold at a loss or at break-even profit. So what they're talking about, the clients are waiting for polished demand to pick back up and are trying to buy as little as possible. Well, for me, that screams big money pulling back on spending. Now, why would that be? Where's the smart money? If they have a lot of money, why are they not spending their money? It's about ostentatious show with the big money crowd. So why would they pull back on spending on jewelry so quickly? Almost a 50% reduction. See, now these are the kind of things where you go, huh, what else might be slowing down out there? Let me see if I can weave another one in here. Still on Zero Hedge. They have some of the best info on the net if you're looking for true information about the state of our economy. Car manufacturers halt production in India amid disastrous slowdown. Disastrous slowdown. India. I thought that was the major economy that's just running away, like in a build the global economy. Just hold on, India is running away. So the new superpower economically. Wow, India, China, just running, run, 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 marathon. Well, if your car manufacturing is a disastrous slowdown, everything else behind it slows down too. 
And then we see what happened with China, 46, 46 percent. That's almost 50 percent food inflation in the first six months of the year. And then the more headlines. Everywhere you look, it's about China pork prices. China reels as pork levels at a record high. Now, you're coming up with the holidays here. And then, you know, you get the Chinese holiday season rolling up here through the following Chinese New Year. We got, you know, the golden holiday, the golden week. Everything's centered around food and pork. Now, pork's a very significant, cultural, important food to be at the dinner table in China. No pork, you're poor. You can't afford meat, you pauper. You know, in China, you're losing face if you don't have pork. Now it's even more difficult to get. So what it's going to mean is having pork is even going to be more of a status symbol. Because now you can brag like, well, even with the swine flu and the culling of all of our pigs and the 7x increase in the price of pork, we can still have it at our dinner table. Look how rich and well-connected we are. Because we could get it and other people can't. Which is only going to drive demand more as everybody bids up for face value. And I'm really curious, like, when a piece of pork is going to cost the same amount as a diamond. Because it looks like it's going to reach parity. I wonder if that could be a new parity point. Diamond pork price parity in the Chinese market. Quarter carat diamonds or something. There has to be a diamond price and category that would be equal to the pork price. <laughs> per piece. Not per kilogram, but per piece. And I'm wondering what that would be. TrueLeafMarket.com. I really want to talk about growing your own food, which will be a necessity moving forward. There's so many ways that we can go about growing different types of vegetables that we're going to need. You know, microgreens are incredibly nutritious. They're super fast to grow. In less than a week, you can have something that you can eat. Also, sprouts. We can get those a little bit taller, a little more dense, a little bit larger volume on the vegetation mass coming off of there. So how do you know what kind of sprouts to grow? How about wheatgrass or herbs? What about different types of herbs that we can add to our foods? Now, what I just described to you, there's a full range of starter guides there at trueleafmarket.com for you to take a look at. Even if it's just for your own knowledge and you don't purchase something from them, at least get the information so you know how to grow microgreens, you know how to grow sprouts, you understand what some of the herbs are for trueleafmarket.com use the link below and give yourself the gift of organic and heirloom seeds rounding out some of the uh, lunchtime favorites 18 percent increase in these things right here dumplings and soya bean products dojiang which is the soya milk that's heated that a lot of people drink in the morning and then something called mao bao dofu which is uh it's kind of a soft Tofu dish with spicy, and the, they mix a couple vegetables in there. It's really hot. If you like spicy food, mapo tofu is what you want to get. But it's super oily as well. But 18% in two weeks, I don't know how many of us can afford that kind of food price rise. For a family of four, and then it's up more than 50% in the last six months. Well, some areas here are putting it 48% on overall just total food. And then others are saying above 50% and everything that you see for wholesale pork pricings, you know, three, four, five, up to seven X, depending on what cut you're getting out of the pig. So China is experiencing what the rest of the world will experience early as an indicator of where our global society is going to go with food pricing and how that in turn is going to crush the economy. Look no further than what is happening in China and then just extrapolate that out into the greater global economy. So if your food price rises 50% in six months, now we don't know if it's going to stabilize. I have no idea. I'm just saying so far up to this point, it's risen 50% in the first six months. Let's say a family is spending $400 on food. They're going to have to spend $600 on food. So that $200 is going to get pulled out of the other rest of the economy somewhere whether it be a subscription service to something, whether it be travel, whether it be new clothes, new electronics, movies, restaurants, that money's going to get pulled out. Now, what if it doubles in price? And then instead of spending $400 a month, and I'm, you know, I'm being very conservative with the 400 bucks. I mean, a family of four for 400, I, I don't even know if you could do that. But I, I'm just going to use 400. Because I see that number tossed around a lot for couples, individuals, etc. Uh, monthly for food, and it's quite a statistically used number, 400, 600. You'll feel, you see this a lot of places, 800 sometimes. So 
We'll stay on 400 on the low ball. Now, what if it doubles? So then your food cost is 800 and it doubled. Now what? That's a significant portion of disposable income coming out of somebody's wages. Because you got to think about how much tax you're already paying on your wages. What your real home take home pay is. I always, you know, laugh at people when I'm talking and they go, yeah, well, I'm making 102,000. And I said, okay, great. Well, how much are you paying in tax? And they're like, oh, 40%. Okay, so really, you're only making 60. And then I said, well, how much is your sales tax in your state? And they're like, 10%. And I said, all right, well, that's minus six grand there. So you got like 54. You got about half of what you really say you make. And then divide that by 12 months. And what do you get? Four grand a month? How much is your rent? How much is your car insurance? And you start breaking it down. Even if you're making 100 grand a year and then you have all those other expenses, if your food price doubles from, say, 400 to 800, that's still going to cut in. That's going to you know, be 20% of your disposable, whatever's left at the end of the month there, versus 10%. Because that's a big jump from 10% to 10 for your food cost to 20% of your food cost for all of the money you have left. You're definitely going to shift something. You're going to move it, morph it, shift it. So as the food prices continue to increase in China, they have been looking here. Here's the whole fakeness of it all. So they say, oh, we're not going to buy American ag products. But then, you know, they're out on the rest of the world going, hey, we need more soya product, but we can't find enough. So now all the prices of soya inside China are rising. So that I wonder how long it's going to be before the citizens are like, all right, food's getting too expensive. Start dealing with America again. They got more food to sell us. Bring down the price. Because the Russian sellers don't have enough stock to uh, supply China. They've already sold them everything they have for this year's availability. It's gone. And what month are we in? Argentina. You know, I did that whole 20-minute part a couple of weeks ago about a Chinese investment to dredge out the rivers and upgrade the port facilities to be able to buy all the cargo, soybean cargo and grain cargo, ag cargo, from Argentina and Brazil. Okay, they swooped up all that production and they're still in a deficit, now what? I mean, what they swooped out of Argentina and Brazil and, and Russia, how long is that going to last before they're back on the world market? Like this whole smoke and mirrors thing of, oh, we're going to stop buying. Nah, it's ridiculous. They import more than any other country food on the planet, hands down. They don't grow enough. Plus, they lost so much this year. It's ridiculous. They lost, what? Publicly, they're saying 35% of the corn. So again, when we come over to corn and beans... Seeing how they're being grown in the same areas, periphery-wise. There's been more flooding in the bean areas, and the rice has been washed away, too. They have enormous rice losses due to too much flooding. Third typhoon to roll over and damage the crop-growing areas. This year alone, it's like some of these typhoons are being steered right over the crop grow zones in China. It's very strange how the, the storms are taking like a dog leg. Turn left, turn right. Like, how do you something go and then take a 90 degree turn in nature? Just not normal. Usually things curve. Fibonacci sequences, spirals, golden means. Usually things just don't go right instantly or left or straighten out. Using energy or geoengineering to direct that storm so perfectly. You know, if I was able to manipulate the weather and I wanted to send a message to the world on how good I'm dialed in the technology, this is it right here. And this is the exact same thing that's happened over in China like three times in a row where these storms just, they'll come in and they'll spin up the coast and they'll dump an enormous amount of rain in the crop grow zones, hence the losses in China. Video is brought to you by our friends at TrueLeafMarket.com. Heirloom and organic seeds for any grow zone on our planet. 